Tuesday, August 23rd in the MLB. And I'm Austin from Calling a Shot. And I'm Morgan from Calling a Shot. And we're back with our three best picks of the day. We got a favorite game pick, got a nerfy, we got a player prop coming your guys' way. As always, guys, just do us a favor, hit that subscribe button, especially if you aren't already subbed. Austin and I put a lot of hard work into these videos. And also, while you're down there, how about you drop a like on this video? And the people don't know, Logan, the NCAA football videos are coming soon. So college football should be uploaded later on this week. You'll definitely know it when you see it. But let's hop into a recap from yesterday. We're talking about baseball today. And yesterday was a profitable day, a solid two in one day. Nothing we can complain about that. Got Cubs. They didn't even score a single run, yet they cover the run line for us. Not how we drew it up, but they get it done for us. Then we had the uh, Nerfy in that Braves Pirates game, a little sweaty with an Acuna double leadoff but we get it done and the Mets first five don't get it done end up losing outright to the Yankees but if you are new to the channel hit that subscribe button. we certainly would appreciate it we can't do it without all you guys love and support and I've said it a couple times this month I'll keep saying it we're donating 10 cents to St. Jude for every single subscriber we gain this month I don't really know what number we're at. I think we've gained about 400 subscribers we got about a month a week left in the month go make that run run that number up if you want to join our talk board too we certainly would appreciate it. it's 100% free we can chat about plays it's linked at the top of the description go join it and then we have a couple new all-stars today we got Tim and Adam. We appreciate you guys for supporting the channel. Thank you guys all so much. Hopefully we made it worth it for you guys. But Logan, we're ready for your favorite pick of the day. What do you got for this Tuesday? Yeah, we're going to we're going to Coors Field. We're going to one of the later games, right? We're going to the Rockies versus Rangers, and I'm taking the Rockies uh, money line. Currently, your best odds on, on this one is uh, minus 120 on, on Fando, but it looks like it's minus 120 on every single book uh, that he's pulling up. So, I mean, pretty standard value across the books, I, I would say. And yesterday, unfortunately, Logan did not do any line reading on his pick, and you see what happened. It's, line reading is important this this time of year, and and it stuck out to me like a sore thumb. First of all, the Rockies are, are favored in, in a game with, with, with Herman Marquez starting. The Rockies have lost four out of the last five uh, Marquez starts and Marquez if, you, if you've never watched him pitch it's a bit of a train wreck it's I, I don't recommend it 5.85 ERA and a 1.55 whip at home he gives up a lot of hits and you know sometimes those hits do translate to runs but being a pitch to contact pitcher you know Marquez is going to challenge the Rangers to put the ball in play and hit where the defense isn't now I've watched enough of the Rangers this year to tell you some days they really don't bring the bats and and some days it, it's just you know bad a bad offensive production and look let's talk about something the numbers won't show right the Rangers are coming off a four game series in Minnesota and they travel the next day all the way to you know to Colorado to Coors Field and I got to get ready for a game and, and facing a pitcher that that is pitched to contact. It's going to it's going to challenge these hitters a lot. And what I also like, te these Texas hitters don't have great splits versus Marquez, right? Seager, four, uh, four for 15, 267. That's somewhat decent. But Semyon, you know, one for nine, only hitting 111. And Adolis Garcia, one for six, 167. So those aren't uh, you know tremendous splits from most of the producing part of their order. I, I think I think your mom Marquez could could be able to pitch solid enough. It's not going to be pretty, but he he might pitch solid enough uh, to get this one done. And I think what the books are actually telling us in this line is that Dane Dunning, they have no faith in Dane Dunning uh, to to go to Coors Field and not get rocked. Right, Dunning five point oh eight road ERA and a one point six six WHIP on the road. Those numbers are honestly equally as bad as Herman Marquez having a whip that high shows a lack of control and just putting on you know free base runners and lots of run opportunities that the Rockies have been converting recently right now the Rockies at home first in hits first in runs fifth in strikeouts at home and they're hitting 329 on batting average of balls in play in home that's that's by far first in, in the majors so the Rockies a great home offense it's hard to fade them especially right Rockies ninth in OPS in August fifth and batting average in August this is a this is an offense that has actually produced the month of August which is important because you know I want season stats but I also want what are you doing for me lately I think the books are telling us that they should be able to get you know enough of a lead up on Dane Dunning that even their 29th ranked bullpen ERA should be able to hold it Texas is 11th in bullpen ERA by comparison yes it might get a little bit scary and a little bit sweaty at the end of this game when the Rockies bullpen does come in and relieve Marquez but I, I really just think they'll, they'll get enough hits and runs up on, on Dunning to give give them the, the run support that they need. And that's why I'm taking the Rockies out, outright. But I real quick do want to talk about Logan's line read because I told you guys, line reading is, is important, you know, this part of the year. I think the Reds plus one and a half, and I know, you know, trusting Lodolo, it, it can, can be scary. And Ranger Suarez shut him out. Um, you know, he well, he went seven, seven innings pitched, zero in runs. Uh, in, in his last type versus the Reds. I know it might be tempting to run the Phillies back in that that offense, but I'm just saying be careful. You saw how many of the 
plus one and a half covered yesterday. But this time of year, you have to take the uncomfortable plus one and a half. It's just how it is, uh, speaking from experience on that one. But Austin, what do you got for the day? So today I'm returning to player prop nation and I'm going to yesterday I bet on the Chicago Cubs and betting on the Chicago White Sox, but their starting pitcher, Dylan Cease, taking his over 17 and a half outs, minus 115 on Caesars. We do see minus 130 on DraftKings. I love it at both of those. And since FanDuel doesn't like to release these lines until they're live, which is fine with me if you want to take a live bet for him, it should be around the same value. I do like White Sox plus one and a half and the under four and a half runs in the first five for this game. I think it's gonna be a more or less low scoring game, at least out of the gates. Now Cease is been great all year over 17 and a half outs which is six plus innings pitched in eight of his last 11 starts including 18 18 and 21 outs his last three away starts so cease also has pitched versus the orioles before back in june seven innings pitched four hits allowed 13 k's he actually climbed every single rung of his uh strikeout ladder that you could get it at and look his strikeout prop is six and a half today i think he has a good chance of hitting that now the white Sox. So thanks to Tony La Russa and his mismanagement, or maybe sleeping on the job, whatever you want to call it. He, uh, yeah, he started Michael Kopech yesterday after he injured himself in the pregame. And what happened? Well, he spotted the Royals four quick runs. They ended up tying the game later on, but ended up losing six to four. And they had to use seven relievers. So their bullpen's weak as is, and now they got to use seven of their guys. So I think their needs cease to come out here and be efficient and pitch pretty far into this game. He's going to probably have about 100 pitch count. He's pitched over that before this year. And cease, well, he's not the most efficient guy in the world. The Orioles should help him out. And what do I mean by that? Well, the Orioles and our buddy Ryan Mountcastle, we love him, but they swing at the first pitch 35.5% of the time, the second best in the MLB or second most in the MLB. So if you can get some early outs where you're getting a one-two pitch you know, type of at-bats, that's absolutely how you can go up to six-plus innings pitch, even get to seven-plus. Orioles also draw only the eighth-fewest walks per game. Look, if Cease is going to miss this you know, five-plus, if he's only going to throw five or less innings pitch, probably because he's either walking a ton of guys or the Orioles are just getting runs up on him and he's just not able to pitch too far into the game. And I just like that the Orioles are swinging a lot early and not walking a ton, which is pretty good for us. So I'm taking Dylan Cease over 17 and a half outs, minus 115 on Caesars. But if you want a couple leans, I was looking hard at the Braves team total under five runs. You got the wrong guy if you think I'm going to trust JT Brubaker, but I do think he's got a good chance. He pitched and hit this under versus the, uh, versus the Braves earlier this year. Also look at the uh, Braves splits in, uh, in Pittsburgh, they really haven't scored a lot of runs historically against this Pirates team. I don't know what it is about the ballpark, but they haven't been scoring a ton. Obviously, they only scored two runs yesterday. I also think the Angels have a good chance of covering that first five run line against the Rays. The Rays' specialty is giving up a run in the top of the fifth to tie the game. It's just whether or not they score in the bottom of the fifth. They did yesterday with Randy Rosarena hitting a homer, but I think the Angels get it done today. Jose Suarez, lefty versus Corey Kluber, has really been struggling. I think they got a good chance there. But my only pick of the day will be Dylan Cease over and outs. But, Logan, I believe you know what time it is. It's Nerf Nation time. You better be grabbing those flags, everyone that has them, and flying them in chat, flying them as hard as you can fly them. Because we hit yesterday on a pretty good one. On a bad Nerfy slate, we managed to get out of get out of the jail free. We're going to wave these flags again today. And we'll talk about one we did consider. But we're going to back to a guy that owes us some money. And we'll talk about that in a second. It's Nationals Mariners, minus 128 on FanDuel Sportsbook. You can actually get, you know, about is this about the first time you know DraftKings obviously the natural juice minus 145 but minus 130 ish on the rest of the books but let's talk about this one on the mound for the Nationals beat well or on the mound for the uh for the Rays actually is what I'm talking about or the Mariners is so the guy who owes us some money it's Mr. Robbie Ray yeah you owe us some money he got us to two outs bottom of the second he gave up a homer last time we can't afford that today Ray 18 and six on Nerf. He's been pretty solid this year. Washington also 15th in first inning runs. They have some annoying hitters, obviously that you know that's going down with that Juan Soto and Josh Bell. But I think Robbie Wright, very good Nerfy record. He can get me those first three outs. Who's pitching for the Nationals today, Logan? Yeah, we've got Fetty on the mound, and, and he's he's making his first start in a hot minute, right? But he has a good Nerfy record. He's 15 and four on Nerfies, which is definitely encouraging. Seattle ninth in first inning runs. We know the Mariners, you know, do sometimes like to score in the first inning. But guys, this over under, you know, set to seven. And I, you know, I you have to do some more additional line reading, unfortunately. I know no no one likes to do it, but the majority of the public is on Seattle minus one and a half and the over, right? I know I know what that type of position the people in C, you know that are betting the Seattle minus one and a half are. They're like, all right, come on, guys, runs early and often. I just want I want some scoring. Let's make it a no sweat bet. And the Mariners don't really do that. They'll they'll, they'll score late, but you know, I, I really do think. This is a slower starting game, you know, a 0-0 type game. 
uh, and and potentially going under that total. So I do really like it. And also, you know, you mentioned about Robbie Ray. Yeah, that home run drove the dagger through our heart. But the, the Nationals aren't a power hitting team, right? They they don't you know normally hit a lot of home runs jinxed. But you know, I I, I really I really think you know Robbie Ray should be solid, and I think Fetty should be solid enough. And and kind of I guess mentioning another one we looked at we looked at Tigers versus Giants that that was one we considered the the value on that one wasn't great and honestly we don't this time of year we don't want to pick the most obvious nerfy on the slate like yesterday but it wasn't an obvious nerfy pick that we made and it hit so that, that's just kind of how you have to operate these days but nerfy nation let's go yeah let's wave these flags let's hopefully go for two in a row that's what we want to see our parlay of the day will be the White Sox money line and Diamondbacks money line. Cease on the mound. Obviously, Davies on the mound for the Diamondbacks. Let's hopefully catch one of those parlays of the day. Those are three official plays at the bottom of the screen. I don't know if my camera just went out, but I appreciate you guys for tuning in. Austin Logan, we're signing out. We'll see you guys.